let's talk about card aiming. Now I'm a little annoyed is because I've already gone through this. This video once and for no reason whatsoever, OBS decided to screw with the audio. My audio is perfectly fine before it even touches OBS. And yet OBS records it and it sounds like it does this first you want to do it. If you want to check it's the left mouse button. If you have an action set up forward, it's set up with that. What is that? That is complete garbage. <sighs> All right, let's run through this. All right, so for my scene, I've got an H box with some texture Rex. This is representing my the cards in my hand, and I have a line 2D, which is going to be doing the drawing for us. Now I want my line to be thin and go to thick, so I have added in the width curve. I've added a curve to it. First line being somewhere between 0.4 and 0.5, and the last line being all the way up at point at uh, one. All right, so from here we can go ahead and jump into the script. All of my cards here have the same script on them, and the first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need access to that line 2D in order to draw our line, right? So I have an on ready to get that line 2D. I have a boolean for determine whether or not we're aiming and if we are aiming we'll draw that line I have a variable for my starting position of the line and if you want those gradients in then I'm doing those gradients as an idea you could do those gradients uh, based off of uh, elemental type so if you have like a fire uh, fire skill or fire ability you could have you know like that fiery gradient for your line if you have an ice or water ability you could have those blues kind of a gradient for your line. Just just an idea I wanted to throw in there. And if you want that, it's very easy to add in. As you see, I just have an enum here for all my elements. I have an export call, called type that is just of those elements. And I can go onto my cards and I can select the drop down, whether it's a fire type or an ice type. And inside of my ready function, I'm just connecting my GUI input signal and I'm adding it to the group called cards. All right, so on GUI input, which is the signal we just connected, if event is input event mouse button, and the bu event button index is one, which is left click, and event dot is released. So I have to, I click, nothing happens, and as soon as I lift up off of that button, that's when this action is gonna take place. And that, what that action is, is I'm going to get all of the cards, right? So I'm going to get all the, all the notes that are in the group cards. And basically for all those cards, I'm going to change my aiming. Else, we'll set aiming to false, right? So if this is the card I'm clicking on, we'll just flip it. Otherwise, aiming is automatically being set to false. And if aiming is false, we're going to clear the point so we have nothing on our line, right? It's an empty line, no points, which means we can't see it. And we'll return early. Otherwise, we're going to set our starting position to our global mouse position. And if you want the elemental stuff in here, then we're going to match type to either elements fire or element ice. And all I'm doing is getting my line 2D, getting the gradient property, and I'm loading in the gradient I created, in this case, a fire gradient or an ice gradient. All right, now inside of our process function, I'm going to check if we are aiming, then we need to draw our line and get our set our points. And to do that, I'm going to get my mouse position, which is going to be a global mouse position. I've got my control point one and control point two. These these numbers here on the end are going to affect the way our uh, the way our, our curve looks and i'll show you how you can kind of modify that and get different appearances but in my opinion these are the best numbers to work with and these are the numbers that you saw in the beginning all right we're going to clear out all the points on our line so we can start fresh the first point is going to be our starting position which is going to be uh, in our case wherever we clicked which is going to be on that card 
and then we're going to run through a range right for t in range 11 so we're going to get 10 points here i'm going to get a t value which is just going to be our t divided by 10.0 and we're going to use this for as the weight of our curve when we do some calculations have a variable here called curve point and a custom function called interpolate curve and i'm passing in the start position control point one control point two mouse position and the t value which again is going to be our weight and that returns a vector two that gets assigned to curve point and then i'll take that curve point and i will add that point onto my line and once we've gone through that for loop then we're going to add the final line which is uh, our mouse position, right? The last point on that line. Now that function isn't too complicated. It's just a lot of lerping. And as you can see, we just have a, the arguments that I mentioned there, start, CP1, CP2, MP, and T, which are float. And T is just being used as the weight in all of our calculations when we're lerping. And you can see we're just going from start to control point one and then control point one to control point two, control point two to mouse point, And that gets us our A, B and C results. And now D is going to give us uh, our alert result from A to B. And E will give us our alert result from B to C. And that gives us a final point of D and E right for our position. So we do one final lerp to return that value. And this is basically what's gonna generate the points in between our uh, beginning and end uh, of our line. So if we run that, that's where you're gonna see that these come in. And I want to show you those buttons, or sorry, those uh, control points. Uh, where are they? Right here. So you can see when I run this with control point, right? Start position is the part that's going to be on the card. If I select that, you can see from where it starts right here and it goes up. It tries to stay as vertical as it can. And no matter where I click, right, that's where it's going. It's just, it's trying to stay up and we can see it goes up. And then it comes over to the mouse position and the mouse position is also uh, as a control point that's pointed up by 200 pixels. Now, you see, if I change this from negative to positive for the start position, right? Control point one. You'll see just like that. We now have it going down, right? Because positive Y is down in uh, this engine. So it's going down and then it's got to curve back up. Now, likewise, if I change this from negative to a positive on control point two, you can see we're just straight up getting basically the inverse of what we had. It's curving down and then up to our mouse. So you can kind of mess around with these uh, to get different results. Uh, for example, I don't know, we could do a hundred. Oh, uh, maybe not a thousand, but a hundred on the X for both of those. And you can see just by adding that, you can see it's kind of like curved out on a 45 degree angle. So it's going like and coming back in. And you can see it's that angle where it's going to cross over. And you might like this. You might want something like this for yours. Uh, but in my opinion, uh, if you ask me, the numbers I have of 0, negative 200 and 0, negative 250. Uh, in my opinion, are uh, the best numbers uh, to use for this. But that's completely up to you. All right, so if you want to have gradients based on elements, you can do that. If you don't, then simply just simply just remove the uh, match type. And if you do that, obviously, you don't need the export or the enum either. And you'll just get a basic white, which, of course, you can change that default color at any point all right well, there you go there's how you can do card aiming and 
hopefully you learned something from this and hopefully this audio didn't get messed up because if I have to do this a third time, I'm going to get start getting really annoyed. <laughs> uh, Alright guys, take care and I'll see you guys next week.